and get clean. And my dad paid for a medical detox and I would get clean and then it just wouldn't work. It just wouldn't stick. I had, I'd overdosed uh, probably twice where, you know, Narcan had to be distributed and it had actually been over five minutes that I was gone and I still came back. Um, and it had just gotten, it had just gone from bad to worse and it continued um, until finally uh, I was buying from these guys in Encinitas and their driver ended up sick or something happened to him, family emergency, I don't know. And so they said, we'll give you 50 bucks if you drive for us today. And I was like, okay, well, I spoke Spanish too, right? So that helps. And so my friend's like, just do it. Just go where they tell you to go and um, you'll get paid at the end of the day. And I was like, okay. So I drove and I did what I was supposed to do. I didn't ask any questions. I did not steal. Um, and I did that and they really liked me, you know? So they're like, hey, you wanna work on the weekends for us? You know, it's all day, you know? And I'm like, you know, we'll pay you this and that. I'm like, yeah, sure. So I kept doing it and I kept doing it. And um, I ended up doing that for four years and I ended up uh, being the trainer. So every three months they would have somebody come from Mexico and I would train them on how to do the job how to distribute the heroin throughout the day. Um, I ended up, since I was the only one that was an American citizen, renting all the houses, the stash houses, buying the cars, insuring the cars, getting the tires for the cars, the maintenance for the cars, disciplining the runners, um, making sure, you know, doing a little, doing customer service, you know, all that kind of thing. And after four years, I had, that's what I had turned into you know, working and. So you're, and, and, you're transporting between Mexico and the United States. No, I did not do any of the border things. I was just a trainer. So I trained for the cart. It turned out it was a cartel. Um, and I trained for them. Uh, I ended up those last couple of years being a trainer. So I would drive and I would train the boys on how to, how to behave and how to deal the heroin. In the meantime, supporting my habit. I would get arrested every once in a while. And I would also call a friend and tell my friend, you tell those guys they better bail me out within one day or I swear to God, my tongue will get real loose. And they bail me out like that. Now, I would never say anything, but that was my threat. I'm like, you better get me out of here because I'm sick as a dog. And so, you know, and the police would always ask me, who are you working for? Who are you doing this for? And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I have no idea. And and it was kind of stupid because the DEA had been watching us that whole time. They had 18,000 pages of wiretaps and transcripts, and I was all over it. So, so I'm assuming this is what got you incarcerated. The first time. So how many times have you been locked up? So this is what got me in a federal prison, and it gave me a 60-month sentence. Um, the second time... 60 months. Yeah. And the second time was uh, for bank robbery. And it was a serial, a, a series of bank robberies. And that was eight years. And that was state prison. All right. So, so, I've been, so, so the, your, your first stay, when the, the first time you were arrested, first time you were arrested, you were in a, you were in a holding cell. So you were in like county jail, city jail, correct? County. Yeah. Right, so that was just 